Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey again, following on from Steve's massive, I think he had more than 50 GPUs in his benchmark of the game that went up on the channel yesterday. As you probably would have quickly realized in that video, Odyssey, well, it just doesn't run very well on some GPUs, particularly mid-range options, following on from what we saw in 2017's Assassin's Creed Origins. But there is good news for those concerned about performance, well, sort of. I have benchmarked every quality setting in the game and compared them all visually. And I think there is a bit of optimization that can be done to recover some performance without losing visual quality. In fact, my custom selection of settings ended up delivering performance close to the high preset while delivering visual quality near equivalent to the maximum ultra high preset. Throughout this video, we'll be progressing towards that result and showing you the exact settings you'll need to tweak uh, because Ubisoft's default presets are pretty rubbish in my opinion. There's a lot of strange choices made and some things that just completely tank performance for no reason. So we'll point those out when we get there. However, and this is also a bit of a precursor for what's to come, Odyssey doesn't scale down particularly well without making the game look like complete garbage. You can gain performance at the high end while getting very good visuals, but there are plenty of settings that don't give a great boost to frame rate when you turn them down, despite having a large effect on quality. So yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster this one. As always, a few quick notes before we get into it. The graphs coming up are in percentage gains, not raw FPS because it better illustrates how the setting tweaks apply to your setup. We benchmark with a variety of GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, high-end and mid-range, and averaged out the results. So what you see here should apply to roughly every GPU, give or take a few percentage points. And if there's anything that might affect one GPU over another, we do point that out. We did still test using our Core i7 8700K test rig overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz, so we were entirely GPU bound in this game. It is a fairly demanding game on the CPU, but when you're playing at higher uh, resolutions like 1440p and 4K, it tends to still be GPU bound. And lastly, all captured footage you see here is from an RTX 2080 Ti running the game at 4K. Steve used the built-in benchmark for testing. I used a few custom in-game benchmarks to better capture the impact of all the game settings. So results between what Steve showed in his video yesterday and what I show here may differ a little. We also recommend watching this video at YouTube's maximum 4K quality, or you can download a source quality file from our Patreon page. So first we'll start with the presets. I really don't recommend using the presets, but understandably some people will just want to choose the best one out of the five Odyssey provides, because it's, you know, pretty easy. And to be honest, when putting them all side by side, there's not a lot of visual difference that's immediately noticeable, particularly between ultra high, very high, and high. With medium, you start to see reduced texture and shadow quality, as well as a general reduction to the lighting system, while with low, everything is stripped back, particularly textures which are now, well, definitely potato quality. The differences between the highest three are the most nuanced, with each mode offering slightly better shadows. Interestingly, the point at which low resolution shadows are swapped for high resolution shadows remains the same for all presets. However, the higher presets use better quality shadows for both far and near shadows. Aside from minor improvements to clouds, water quality, and ambient occlusion, the higher presets also offer better draw distance. It's most noticeable in the benchmark, but it also looks similar to this in the more densely populated areas of the game, ultra high renders higher quality objects further out, and this distance is reduced for very high and high. I find the level of pop-in pretty noticeable for the high preset. Having entire objects pop out of thin air quite close to the camera is a bit jarring. It'll be nice for the game to better handle those transitions. When it comes to performance, you'll want to immediately switch from ultra high to very high, as there's a pretty small visual difference here. And while the performance improvement in our benchmark was only 12% or so, that margin is higher on low end cards and lower resolutions, as some of the settings ultra users are particularly taxing. Steve showed up to a 30% improvement on a GTX 1060 at 1080p using the built-in benchmark. You are gonna see less than that in the actual game, but it's still a big performance uplift simply from shifting down to very high. However, our preference here is actually to use the high preset. You do get reduced shadow quality and view distance compared to very high, but we're looking at a 12% increase in performance in our non-canned benchmark and a 25% improvement over ultra. 
Medium is also a good choice for mid-tier GPUs, giving a reduction in quality for a boost in performance. Unfortunately, I think the Medium preset is really where the game tops out, as low looks pretty terrible. So at best, we're seeing a 47% improvement between Ultra and Medium. That's not surprising considering what we saw with Origins, but it's disappointing when you look at the overall performance of the title. Now the fun begins as we move into looking at every single game setting in detail, and there are some absolute shockers in here, so stay tuned. We'll start with anti-aliasing because this is a strange one. Odyssey actually has four modes here, and all but off, I guess, use temporal anti-aliasing or TAA to some degree. Odyssey's TAA implementation is not great. It's improved slightly compared to Origins from what I could see just doing some pretty basic visual comparisons, but it's still a bit blurry in some instances, reducing the clarity of the game's excellent texture work. The high mode, for example, does cut out shimmering and most aliasing, but it's at the expense of a very soft presentation which looks a bit blurred, even at 4K. I feel this game is really missing an SMAA option. I tried to add that in with Reshade, but I only tested for about two minutes and I couldn't get the game to load properly. Uh, SMAA would better preserve fine detail while removing a lot of the aliasing for little performance cost. But it's the medium and low anti-aliasing modes that are particularly interesting. It's hard to tell, but I think Ubisoft is using some form of temporal reconstruction when you enable medium or low. In other words, the game is being rendered at a sub-native resolution, then temporally upscaled to whatever resolution you set. That's because both of these modes provide a performance improvement compared to no anti-aliasing, and both medium and especially low are even less blessed with detail than high. Looking at the performance breakdown, you get 5% more performance with medium and 16% more with low compared to high or no anti-aliasing, both which deliver the same performance. Normally anti-aliasing decreases performance, but whenever you see better performance, again, it's likely using some sort of reconstruction technique. I haven't spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what's going on, but after looking at some comparisons, my guess is low actually renders the 4K image at 1800p or thereabouts. If you're really struggling for performance, you might like to experiment with low, but for me, the presentation is far too soft. I'd stick with high or even no anti-aliasing here, particularly at 4K. Shadow quality, I touched on a bit when discussing presets. This setting impacts two key elements, the resolution of close-up shadows and the quality of shadows further from the camera. The point at which you see the transition between close and far shadows doesn't change, so all modes have some level of pop-in, which is a bit disappointing. This game engine certainly doesn't have a blending feature that's as nice as some others. Ultra High comfortably has the highest resolution shadows both near and far, and that helps reduce the visibility of the transition. Everything from very high down uses a pretty low resolution far shadow, and there's not a great difference overall between very high and high. Medium and then low both step down the resolution of closer shadows. The setting is a tough one to choose from. There's no significant performance difference between very high and medium, so the easy choice there among those is using very high. You do get around a 3% uplift shifting from ultra high to very high, but it comes at a noticeable loss in quality with greater pop in visibility. I reckon this is one of the more noticeable visual downgrades in the game, so if you have the GPU power, I'd really recommend keeping it on ultra high and trying to sacrifice a bit from the other less important settings. If you'd rather get more performance, very high is a good choice. Environment details only impacts draw distance, the amount of items loaded and general geometry quality at close range does not change with this setting. So here, it's all about choosing a level of tolerance for pop-in, ultra high, giving by far the least noticeable pop-in, while a mode like high, you'll spot objects appearing out of thin air a fair bit as you move around the busier village areas. The good news is the setting doesn't have a large impact on performance, particularly if you have a decent amount of VRAM. There is effectively no difference to average performance and a slight dip to 1% lows when comparing ultra high and high. Then medium and especially low give minor improvements. The level of pop-in at medium and low is pretty crazy, so I'd honestly stick to ultra high here unless you have VRAM or memory performance limited. Texture detail is an obvious choice, as with most games you want to use the highest possible setting unless you're running out of video memory for the resolution you are playing at. High at 4K only allocates a touch over 6 gigabytes on a 2080 Ti, so I suspect most people with mid to high end graphics cards will be fine here. Odyssey's texture quality setting does have a larger than usual impact too, low textures look absolutely awful, while high is noticeably sharper than medium, and in general the texture work in this game is too good to waste, so stick to high unless you have 4 gigabytes of VRAM or less. And as is the case with most texture settings, there is no significant impact to performance unless you select low. 
Terrain quality isn't worth discussing in depth because there's no difference in performance between high and medium, which are the only two settings. High is slightly superior visually, but with no performance difference, it doesn't really matter, just stick it on high. Clutter is another setting that doesn't really impact performance all that much, but it does impact how dense foliage and other similar elements are. Odd to call grass density uh, clutter, but whatever, Ubisoft. Uh, Ultra has slightly better draw distance for those elements than medium, while low disables a lot of the grass. Looking at performance, you'll only start to see performance improvement on low, which looks pretty poor, so just stick this one on the maximum setting. Fog is a setting that has a very subtle effect in some areas, but has a significant impact on performance. As far as I could tell, there was almost no difference between high and medium, while low appears to reduce fog density to a minimum level. When looking at performance, turning down fog from high to medium improved frame rates by 4% on average, which is a pretty large difference considering the visual change, though I should note you'll only see this performance improvement in areas with fog. Low could also be a decent option if you want a bit of extra performance at the expense of basically removing most of this effect. The water quality setting affects the draw distance and visibility of objects beneath the vast ocean surfaces in the game without noticeably affecting the quality of the beautiful water simulation itself. There's little difference between very high and high, but when you step down to medium, deeper parts of the ocean disappear from view. Low is like a boring water mode, only showing you objects at a very close distance. Again, the performance numbers here relate to scenes with a lot of water, and there's a nice cadence between each of the settings. I'd opt for high here, as it's a noticeable step up from medium, though I could understand opting for medium if you want a bit more performance. Low-end gamers can use low without completely destroying the quality of water, which is nice. Screen space reflections, again, mostly impact the quality of water surfaces, whether that's the ocean or puddles around the environment. SSR provides a more accurate and realistic surface reflection simulation, and it really does look fantastic when enabled, especially when you put it side by side with the game running without SSR. Interestingly, medium looks pretty close to off, so I don't see any reason to use the off mode, particularly when we look at the performance impact, and there's no real difference between medium and off here either. Turning from high to medium will give you a two percent performance improvement, but that's not worth it considering the large visual upgrade that SSR provides. Volumetric Clouds is the crazy killer setting in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Turn this setting way up and watch your frame rate fall to its knees. This game does have a very nice volumetric cloud simulation, especially in stormy conditions, but seriously, the performance hit is ridiculous relative to the visual difference. Looking here, Ultra High does have more voluminous, more detailed clouds than High, but the difference really isn't that massive, and the sky isn't an area you'll be focused on for most of the game. Medium, and especially low, drop cloud quality further. But seriously, look at these performance differences. A whopping 40% improvement simply from switching volumetric clouds from ultra high to high. And to make matters crazier, this performance delta was recorded in the exact scene you saw earlier, which isn't all that visually impressive. And even worse, you'll see very similar deltas in area of the game with only a small portion of the sky in view. So it's well worth turning this setting down to gain a ton of performance. My preference here is to use the high setting, though again, medium is a good option for those on lower tier hardware. On the RTX 2080 Ti at 4K, going from ultra high to high, saw frame rates in one section jump from 44 FPS on average to over 60 FPS, which is a mind boggling difference for such a small visual downgrade. Even going from very high, used with the very high preset Steve benchmark with, to high, delivers a large performance improvement in most areas of the game. Turning this setting down is an absolute must for performance. On a much less interesting note, Ubisoft provides a separate quality setting for character textures as opposed to general environment textures. Again, this setting makes very little difference to performance and high delivers the best visual quality, so stick with high. Character quality was a bit of an enigma. I didn't really spot much of a difference. If anything, there was a very slight reduction to the character models between ultra high and low. There wasn't a significant difference in performance either, though I'd recommend dropping from ultra high to very high for a slight gain in MPC dense areas for basically no visual difference. Nearly at the end of this one, next up is Ambient Occlusion. This setting affects self-shadowing and the general depth of the game world, with off looking a lot flatter than any of the three Ambient Occlusion modes. Very high gives the greatest level of shadowing and the most realistic depth, with high only giving a small decrease and medium another small decrease. I think high does look slightly better than medium, so I'd recommend splitting the difference and going with high, though medium is a good choice for those with less powerful hardware. Gaining 2% here for a small quality loss is a good result. 
The final setting in the game is depth of field. This one comes into play when talking to NPCs. The quality of the effect is very high, but it's also very punishing, causing a decent drop in frame rate when instigating a conversation. There isn't any difference between high and low though, so if you like the depth of field effect and want to keep it enabled, there's no point using low as it gives no performance improvement and no visual improvement. Disabling it could be a very good option though, as you'll see 12% better performance when the effect is active. Now that all that's done, let's summarize it all and show you our final custom settings that we recommend for playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As I said earlier, the standard presets aren't great, particularly as Very High uses a punishing volumetric cloud setting while missing out on the superior shadows and draw distances provided by the Ultra High preset. High corrects the volumetric lighting issue but gives reduced visual quality in a number of areas. So our custom settings you see here are designed to give as close to Ultra High as possible without the massive performance hit of that preset. Of course, the game overall is quite punishing, so for those with mid-range systems, I'd recommend a few different settings, like dropping shadows to very high, water quality to medium or low, volumetric clouds to medium, and ambient occlusion to medium while maintaining the other settings. When you put our custom preset beside the ultra high and high presets, you can see we're getting pretty close to ultra high, especially in terms of shadow quality. Draw distance is also much improved as you move throughout the world. And the good news is we've improved performance by roughly 20% with these custom settings over the ultra high preset in general gameplay. Sometimes much more than that when the cloud system really ramps up. This puts performance between the very high and high presets while offering better visuals. With the game this poorly optimized, that's a huge win for those struggling for frame rate. While this is great news for those that wanted ultra quality visuals at better levels of performance, unfortunately Odyssey doesn't have a lot of room for reducing quality to get the game running better on say, a GTX 1050 Ti. A lot of the settings have very little performance impact after a certain point, often for large drops in visuals. Textures for example look absolutely terrible on low for basically no performance uplift. Environment detail as well impacts draw distance and gives a disappointingly low frame rate uplift on lower settings. Overall, I feel that Ubisoft probably could have done a lot more to get this game running better on mid-range hardware. Having the presets use a more sensible volumetric cloud setting would be a start, but it would be great if you could turn down the density or geometry level of on-screen objects too. I think lower spec gamers would be happy to sacrifice a few high quality pots and walls to get this game running better, and there certainly is a very dense game world here with lots of elements, so I think if there was an ability to turn down some of those elements, you could get better performance on lower tier systems, but you simply can't make that change with the current array of settings. And as Steve mentioned in his video too, I suspect many of the performance issues are from trying to do too much with the current aging game engine. That's it for this look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey and all of its graphics settings. Hopefully our custom configuration will let you squeeze more out of your system and cut away some of Ubisoft's poor optimization. If you want to check out a source quality version of this video at 4K 100 megabit per second, there's a download link for our patrons in the description below. Give this a like and subscribe too if you want to see more of these videos and I'll catch you in the next one.